this is uh, my uh, fifth lecture on uh, simple linear regression. Uh, the content of uh, today's lecture uh, is, you know, we will be talking about uh, confidence interval for uh, the regression coefficient uh, beta 1 and then we will be talking about uh, uh, interval estimation of the mean response and uh, finally, we will be talking about prediction of uh, uh, new observations for a uh, given value of uh, um, a regressor variable x equal to uh, x naught. So, before I uh, uh, start talking on intervals, interval estimation on uh, interval estimation for beta 1, uh, I want to just recall uh, uh, the important parameter I talked about in the last class. Uh, that uh, coefficient of uh, determination that is r square. Uh, coefficient of determination uh, which is uh, defined uh, by r square uh, denoted by r square. Uh, R square is equal to SS uh, regression by uh, SS T. So, uh, this one is uh, basically uh, this uh, R square, it uh, measures the, the proportion of uh, variability in, in the data or in the response variable that is uh, uh, explained by the uh, model or that is explained by the regressor variable. Uh, uh, for example, if we, if we consider uh, the Disney toy example, uh, there R square is equal to uh, SS regression uh, was uh, 4.9 and SST is uh, 6. So, this is equal to 0.82. So, the meaning of this one is that uh, 80 uh, 2 percent uh, of the total variability in, in the response variable or uh, the total variability in uh, sales amount uh, is explained by the amount of money uh, spent on uh, advertisement. Well, uh, we know that the range for R square is from 0 to 1. Uh, we discussed when r square is equal to 1. Uh, let me uh, consider the case r square equal to 0. Well, so r square is equal to 0. Uh, well, so r square can also be written as 1 minus S S residual by S S T. Okay, so this quantity is going to be equal to zero if if S S residual by S S T uh, if this ratio value is equal to one. That means R square is equal to zero when when S S residual is equal to S S T. So, what is S S residual? S S residual is summation y i minus y bar uh, sorry y i minus y i hat square which is equal to 
summation y i minus y bar square i is from 1 to n. Okay. So, these two uh, quantity uh, are equal uh, when when y i hat is equal to y bar. Okay. Uh, so, basically the uh, if the fitted model is y hat equal to y bar, then r square value is equal to 0. That means, uh, uh, this fitted model uh, it does not uh, depend on the uh, regressor variable. Well, so the situation I mean uh, suppose uh, we have some data and uh, we have a set of observations x i y i and uh, the fitted model is this one which is y hat equal to y bar that means, uh, the significance of this one is that uh, x y this way is that there is no uh, relationship between between the uh, between the response variable and the uh, regressor variable. Uh, I mean this will happen y hat equal to y bar. Uh, Will, be, will happen when there is there is no relationship between between uh, y and x. Also, in other way, you can think about. I mean, uh, this will happen when when beta one is equal to equal to zero. Okay. So, this also uh, says I mean S r square is r square is equal to s s s s regression by s s t and we know that s s regression is beta 1 uh, hat square uh, s x x by s s t. So, uh, this this will be equal to 0 uh, when when beta 1 uh, is uh, is equal to 0. Well, so next we uh, move uh, to uh, for the uh, confidence interval for beta 1. Well, so uh, beta uh, our model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, this is called the intercept and this is beta 1 is basically uh, the slope and uh, we know that the least, least square estimator of beta 1 is beta 1 hat which is equal to s x y by s x x. So, uh, this estimator is uh, is, uh, is is the result of uh, least square estimate and uh, and this is uh, in fact more precisely this is called the point estimation of uh, beta 1. So, the concept of uh, uh, interval estimation is that you know uh, instead of giving a point estimate of some population parameter, uh, the interval estimation gives uh, an interval uh, such that the probability that 
the population parameter will lie in that interval uh, with high probability that that means maybe the with probability point, point 0.95 or 99. So, uh, the technique to get uh, you know the interval estimation is that you find uh, first you find the point uh, estimate or you find the point estimator of the population parameter and then you find the sampling distribution of the uh, point estimator. Well, so here uh, the beta 1 is equal to S x y by S x x. Uh, we need to find uh, the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat. Uh, we know that beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator of beta 1. So, this is that means the beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 and also we know that the variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma square by S x x. And also we have proved in previous lecture uh, that uh, you know this beta 1 hat uh, this one is basically it is a linear combination of random variables y i and uh, we have assumed that you know y i is are uh, uh, y i is are normally distributed. So, uh, so any linear combination of uh, normal variable uh, also follows normal distribution. So, beta 1 hat we know that beta 1 hat follows uh, beta 1 hat uh, follows normal distribution uh, with uh, mean beta 1 and variance uh, sigma square by uh, S x x right. Well, from here we can say that uh, beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by sigma square is x x root of this, this follows normal 0 1. Uh, well, but the situation is that you know uh, most of the cases uh, sigma square is uh, not known. Then uh, we replace sigma square by uh, its unbiased uh, estimator um, that is uh, m s residual. So, if we replace uh, m s residual, uh, if, if we replace sigma square by uh, m s residual, then this, uh, uh, this uh, random variable uh, beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by m s residual by s x x this follows t distribution with uh, degree of freedom n minus 2. Okay. Now, uh, okay. so what we got is that uh, we got that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by m s residual by S x x this follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus 2. And uh, let me call this uh, equal to t. And now, uh, we need to have a confidence interval for, for beta 1. Well, suppose this is the t distribution. Now, we will take two points this point is t alpha by 2 n minus 2. The meaning of this one is that t greater than this one and the probability of this, this area, I mean this portion is alpha by 2. Uh, so, from here and this point is, this point is minus t alpha by 2 n minus 2. Now, beta 1 hat minus beta 1 
by ms residual by s x x we can say that this uh, t this is basically the t so t is in this interval t alpha by 2 n minus 2 greater than t alpha by 2 n minus 2 with probability with probability 1 minus alpha ok. So, uh, to make this probability high we have to choose alpha accordingly if sub for example, if, if you want to make this probability uh, say 0 0.95 then then we have to choose alpha equal to 0 0.05 ok ok. So, from here uh, we get the uh, confidence interval uh, for uh, for beta 1. So, we say that 100 into 1 minus alpha percent that means, the if we choose alpha equal to 0 0.05 this quantity is going to be uh, 95 percent uh, confidence interval for for beta 1 is obtained from here. Uh, just let uh, simple algebra write beta. So, the range of beta 1 is is uh, beta 1 hat plus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 root over m s residual by s x x and the lower bound is beta 1 hat minus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 m s residual by s x x. So, this one is uh, 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 this one is uh, basically you know uh, 95 percent uh, confidence interval for beta 1 and the meaning and the in other word uh, we can say that uh, the that the population parameter uh, beta 1 uh, which is basically the slope for the simple linear regression model. Uh, this will uh, lie in this interval with uh, a probability 0.95. Uh, let me uh, explain this one uh, in the toy example, in the Disney toy example. So, uh, what we got is that uh, the upper bound was uh, beta 1 hat plus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 root over m s residual by s x x. Uh, this is the upper bound for beta 1 and the lower bound is beta 1 hat minus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 m s residual by s x x. Okay. Uh, so, for the Disney toy example beta 1 hat is equal to 0 0.7 and uh, there we have uh, 5 data points. So, we will choose alpha equal to 0 0.05 to make uh, you know probability 0 0.95. So, T 0 0.0253 is uh, you see the value of this one from uh, from the statistical table this one is equal to uh, 3.18 2. So, we only need to compute this quantity root over of root over of m s residual by s x x which is equal to 0 0.367 s x x is 10. Okay. 
and uh, uh, you know uh, it's not difficult to now check that that beta one will lie in the interval one point three to zero point one and uh, beta one will lie uh, in the interval point one to one point three with probability this probability is equal to 0.95. So, uh, this is what uh, the interval estimation is and you know instead of giving uh, one uh, estimate uh, of a population parameter, uh, here we give an interval and uh, and uh, and the use of this interval is that we can say that the population parameter will lie in this interval with uh, with high probability that is 0.95 okay so next uh, uh, we move to interval estimation of mean response that is uh, E y mean response or expected response for given x equal to x naught. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, once uh, you have the uh, fitted model, you know one uh, important application of regression model is to uh, estimate the expected response for a given uh, value of the regressor variable. And also the another important problem uh, for the regression model, uh, another important application of the regression model is that uh, uh, prediction of new observation uh, corresponds to a, uh, a given value of uh, response variable, uh, given value of a regressor variable x. So, first we will talk about uh, uh, the estimation of uh, in, in fact the interval estimation of the expected response or mean response at some for a given value of the uh, regressor variable x. Okay. So, here uh, we want to find interval estimation of mean response that is or expected res response for x equal to x naught. Okay. So, this looks like you know uh, like a conditional expectation, but uh, basically what uh, I want to mean by this notation is that I want to uh, estimate the expected response value uh, for given x equal to x naught. That means, uh, at x naught point of the response of the regressor variable, I want to find the expected response. Well, uh, if you if you recall the model, uh, simple linear regression model, y equal to beta naught plus beta one x plus epsilon. So the expected response y at the point x equal to x naught this quantity is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x naught. Okay. So, uh, we, we want to find an estimator of this quantity 
beta naught plus beta 1 x. And not only I mean uh, we are not uh, looking for the point estimation of, of uh, this expected response, uh, we are looking for an interval estimation of uh, this expected response at the point x equal to x naught. Well, so again you know uh, we have to start from the point estimation of uh, I mean one estimator of uh, this expected response. Uh, we know that an unbiased estimator of this expected response y given x equal to x naught is Uh, let me denote this estimator by this expected response hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught. Okay. So, I should put x naught here. Okay. We want to find uh, interval estimation uh, of uh, this expected response at the point x equal to x naught. Okay. So, this is a this is an unbiased estimator of the expected response. Well, uh, it is very easy to prove that this is an unbiased estimator because both beta naught and beta 1 they are uh, unbiased estimator of beta naught and beta 1 respectively. Now, we need to find the sampling distribution of this quantity uh, or this random variable I should say. Uh, well, to get that uh, I need to find the variance of uh, this estimator, the variance of beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught. is equal to is equal to um, variance of variance of y bar plus beta 1 hat x naught minus x bar right uh, what I did here is that I just I have replaced we know that beta 1 hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar. So, I have replaced beta naught hat by this quantity. Now, variance of this one is equal to variance of y bar plus variance of beta 1 hat x naught minus x bar plus 2 i's covariance of y bar beta 1 hat x naught minus x bar. Right? And uh, it is not uh, difficult to prove that this quantity, this covariance term is equal to equal to 0. Now, uh, what I want to do is that uh, I want to write down the variance of beta 1 hat plus beta 1 beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught is equal to is equal to basically variance of y bar which is sigma square by n plus variance of this quantity 
uh, which is which is uh, x naught minus x bar whole square into sigma square by s x x. Well, so uh, finally, the variance of this quantity is equal to uh, sigma square into 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Right. So, uh, again you know uh, the same argument beta 1 sorry beta naught hat is a uh, linear combination of y i's beta 1 hat is also a linear combination of y i's. So, uh, since uh, the uh, since y i's follows a normal distribution. So, you can uh, we can uh, say that beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat uh, x naught uh, which is a linear combination of random variables that also follows uh, normal distribution. So, beta naught hat or or uh, we can say that the estimator of y given x equal to x naught this estimator follows uh, normal distribution with uh, mean beta naught plus beta 1 x naught and variance sigma square by 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Okay. And from here, uh, from here, uh, now the sampling see uh, sigma square is uh, is not known. So, we replace sigma square by m s residual. Uh, so, uh, what we got finally is that uh, this estimator y given x equal to x naught minus you know this this one is basically uh, response expected response at the point x equal to x naught by uh, by root of by root of you know uh, m s residual I am just replacing sigma square by m s residual uh, into 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar by s x x. This follows t distribution with uh, uh, with degree of freedom n minus 2. Okay. So, uh, we want to find a confidence interval for this expected response at the point x equal to x naught. Now, uh, we have an estimator for this one and we, we have the sampling distribution. This is called the sampling distribution of uh, this estimator. sampling distribution of estimator and from here uh, from here we we, we get the uh, um, 95% confidence interval for the expected response and that is given by that is given by well let, let me write 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval on expected response at the point x equal to x naught is is e of y given I am writing just x naught this is in between e of y given 
x naught estimator plus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 and then that uh, and that here you have root of this quantity m s residual into 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Okay. And similarly, the lower bound is uh, uh, E y given x naught this quantity minus t alpha by 2 n minus 2 m s residual 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar is x x. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the confidence interval for this one, and this confidence interval is uh, is minimum. You know, uh, this is this confidence interval is is minimum uh, at x equal to x naught. And uh, this widens as, and this widens as x naught minus x bar. The absolute value of this one increases. Well, uh, I mean uh, this looks a bit uh, uh, abstract. Uh, let me give uh, one um, example for this one. Uh, you know, again, you consider the uh, consider the toy example, Disney toy example. Uh, and here, uh, what you do is that estimate the estimate mean sales amount. When advertisement cost is say four dollar at the point zero five level. Okay, so uh, you know you find out all these things. Uh, uh, well, let me just compute the uh, upper bound for uh, this one. Uh, the upper bound is uh, E y given x naught estimate of this one plus T alpha by 2 n minus 2 into m s residual 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Okay. Uh, okay, you know this quantity is nothing but beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught. So, we know the value of uh, uh, this one. This one is uh, basically minus 0 0.1 plus beta 1 hat is 0 0.7 and x naught is 4. So, this one is equal to 2.7. Now, uh, we know that this quantity is since uh, in the Disney toy example n equal to 5. Uh, so, this one is basically T 0 0.0253 which is equal to uh, 
c 0.182. Now, we need to compute this term. Uh, here, what we have is that we know m s residual is 0 0.367, n is 5 plus x naught is given 4 and uh, you can check that uh, you go you see the Disney toy data you can check that x bar is equal to 3. Uh, so, this is 4 minus 3 square by 10 and uh, this will come out to be uh, 0.367 into 0.3, which is equal to 0.3182 into 0.33. Well, so the upper bound is going to be uh, for this quantity expected response at the point 4 is going to be uh, 3.75 and lower bound is obtained by just replacing uh, this uh, plus sign by minus. This will give you 2.7 minus this quantity 3.182 into 0.33. So, this will be 1.65 and, and the probability that the expected response when the cost on advertisement is equal to 4, the expected response will lie in this interval with probability 0 0.95 and uh, you can go back to the, uh, you can see the original data there you will see that the, ex, uh, the actual uh, response value is equal to 2. Uh, corresponds to uh, uh, x equal to 4. So, this is how you know um, uh, we give uh, uh, confidence interval uh, for some population parameter and here the population parameter is beta naught plus beta 1 uh, x naught and uh, we, we, we have given a uh, 95 percent uh, confidence interval for for that population parameter, which is uh, here it is basically the expected response at uh, some value of uh, for a given value of x equal to x naught. Well, so another uh, important application of uh, uh, this uh, um, regression model is to predict uh, the new observation. This one is a bit a little uh, difficult, you know there is a slight difference between the expected response and uh, what I am going to um, uh, do now. Uh, this says that you know next let me, uh, let's, let me uh, explain the things. Uh, we are going to predict a new observation, predict prediction of new observation. Well, uh, what I want to do is that, uh, uh, you know, is the, uh, we, uh, we want to predict uh, new observations, uh, say why not corresponds to, corresponds to a specific value of regressor a x equal to x naught. Okay. Uh, the difference between the previous one and this one is that uh, in the previous problem we wanted predicted response and uh, here uh, we want to predict the uh, observation um, at the point x equal to x. 
So, the difference between you know uh, the previous and this one is that see y naught is nothing but y naught is nothing but it is a new observation. Uh, given the data we have the we have fitted the model and now using that fitted model we want to predict uh, the response value uh, at a new uh, point. Okay? Uh, so, we want to predict y naught which is basically uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x naught plus epsilon. We want to predict this one and the previous uh, problem was we wanted to predict or we wanted to estimate expected response at x equal to x naught which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x naught. Okay. Uh, so, here we want to estimate y naught which is equal to this quantity and in the previous example we wanted to estimate expected this response which is equal to this quantity. Well, now uh, again if x equal to x naught then you know beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught is So, we want to predict y naught. So, we will start from this point estimator. Uh, well, now we define a random variable psi which is equal to this is bit tricky uh, which is equal to y naught minus y naught hat. Okay? My y naught hat is nothing but this quantity this is equal to this is basically y naught hat. Now, you can check that it is not difficult to check that expected value of this new random variable psi is equal to 0 and, and the variance of this new random variable psi is equal to variance of y naught minus y naught hat which is equal to the variance of see uh, y not hat uh, this y not hat is the, this quantity beta not hat plus beta 1 hat x not. So, the whole thing it is a, a function of y 1, y 2, y n the given observation, but y not is a new observation and this one is independent of y 1, y 2, y n. So, y not hat basically involves y 1, y 2, y n and y not is a independent observation. So, that is why we can write the variance of this quantity is equal to variance of y not plus variance of y not hat. Okay? And now, uh, the variance of y not hat we know because just now we have computed the variance of this quantity. Uh, it is not difficult to check and variance of y not is equal to sigma square. So, variance of y naught hat so variance of psi is going to be variance of uh, well uh, sigma square plus variance of y naught hat which is equal to sigma square plus sigma square by 1 by n. This one we just we have proved that this is equal to uh, x naught um, minus x bar whole square by sigma x x. Okay because y naught hat is nothing but this one is nothing but 
beta naught hat plus beta one hat x naught. Okay, so uh, this is sigma square into one plus one by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by sigma. Sorry, uh, this is a s x x. This is a s x x. Okay. Well, uh, and uh, we know that the sampling distribution of uh, psi uh, psi minus expectation of psi is equal to zero by variance of psi. This follows. Uh, this follows normal distribution, but now if you replace in the variance of psi this sigma square by m s residual, then this is going to follow t distribution with degree of freedom uh, n minus 2. Okay. Uh, so, from here we get uh, uh, 100 into, into 1 minus alpha percent, uh, we call it prediction interval. Okay. Um, prediction interval of prediction interval for for y naught is um, y naught lies between y naught hat plus t alpha by two n minus 2 into the whole thing uh, m s residual into 1 plus 1 by n plus x minus x naught x naught uh, okay, x bar whole square by s x x. Okay. So, this one is uh, the upper bound for y naught and the lower bound is uh, y naught hat. This plus will be just replaced by minus. So, this is t alpha by 2 n minus 2 by into m s residual 1 plus 1 by n and this quantity plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Okay, I hope you uh, can understand because basically this quantity is nothing but this one only the sigma square has been replaced by uh, m s residual. So, this this is the uh, you know um, 95 percent. If you put alpha equal to uh, 0 0.05, then uh, then the probability that the the future observation uh, at x equal to x naught uh, will lie in this uh, interval with uh, with probability uh, 1 minus alpha. That is basically point, uh, point 0.95 and uh, here, you know, of course, uh, this interval is <coughs> is minimum uh, when x equal to at the point x equal to uh, x naught, and uh, and uh, this interval uh, is uh, uh, always wider than the interval given for the expected uh, expected response at the point x equal to x naught. Well, so uh, yeah, this is uh, all for today, and this is perhaps you know this is my last class uh, um, on simple linear regression, and uh, next in the next uh, lecture we'll be uh, talking about multiple linear regression. Thank you. <coughs>